What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about the Python package that allows us to automatically find all modules and packages that are used in a project and to automatically create a requirements txt file based on that so let us get right into it. Alright, so for this video today, I'm going to be working on Linux. However, all of this works on Windows in the same way. And I assume also on Mac because the Python package that we're going to use in this video is platform independent. And the name of this package is pip rex. So basically pip requirements, and we can install it by saying pip three or pip depending on your operating system and installation, install pip rex like this in my case already installed. And this package allows us to automatically create a requirements txt file based on packages and modules used in a code base. So not on what we have installed. So it's not like saying uh, pip freeze in an environment, getting all the packages and then putting this into a requirements file. Because first of all, this includes all the packages that you have installed. Second of all, it doesn't include packages that are being used, but you don't have installed. So maybe I have a project where I use most of these packages. But for example, I don't use uh, twisted. So it would still put twisted into the requirements file, or maybe I'm using some other module that is not listed here. And I still want to have it in the requirements file, but I don't want to install it necessarily on my system for whatever reason. We can use piprex to automatically look at the code and extract all the um, packages from the import statements, and to then uh, essentially create a requirements txt file based on that. So we're going to use a very simple example here, I'm going to create a file uh, main.py. So I'm going to just create it here, I'm going to also make a directory my underscore module. And I'm going to go into that module and I'm going to create a couple of files here. Um, maybe module one dot py module two dot py and module three dot py. So just to complete what I was talking about here before, what we usually do is we create a virtual environment, we install the packages that we need, we make everything compatible, and then we do pip freeze. And then we put that into a requirements txt file, oh, not tyt, sorry, txt. Um, and then basically, you have this file requirements txt that you can just look at with all the dependencies. And what we can do is we can say pip three install dash r requirements txt. And this basically then allows us to just install the packages that are listed in this txt file with the respective versions. So this is what we can do. But again, as I mentioned, this includes modules in the environment we maybe don't want to include because we don't use them in the project. Uh, and it also uh, doesn't include everything that we don't have installed. So let me just remove the requirements files here. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to just edit the module files here, we're just going to do something very simple. I don't know, maybe we're going to just do the imports actually, uh, by the way, so that we can actually use this, we need to also create an init py file. So let's go, let's go into the module one py and let's do some basic stuff. For example, import numpy smp, import pandas spd, and maybe we want to have some basic function, my function, uh, it will return np arrange 0 100 um, 1 or something like that. And then we're going to have my function two or something whatever is going to just return a PD data frame based on an empty dictionary. I hope this works. I mean, actually, the code doesn't have to work. Uh, the main focus is on the imports, because whether we use the imports or not doesn't matter, because the tool is going to look at the imports, and it's then going to create the requirements file based on that. Uh, so I can just close this now I can go into the module two, not px, but py. Uh, here, we're going to import requests, maybe we're going to import beautiful, or actually from beautiful soup for import or actually it's ps4 right from ps4 import beautiful soup like this we're not going to write any code here and module three here the interesting thing now we're going to import a module that's not installed on the system for example import chess i don't have the chess module on my system we can see that this is the case by calling pip3 freeze we're going to grab everything where chess occurs and we don't have anything where chess occurs. If I do the same thing for NumPy, you're going to see that it will find NumPy. Okay, so 
basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the main py file. And I'm going to just say from my module import module one, I'm going to do that three times for module two and three as well. And that's now my project, I'm not going to do anything with it. This is just um, some some sample code here. And now one of the packages is not installed, I have a bunch of packages installed that are not used. I want to have a requirements txt file based on that um, based on this code base here. So what I do is I say pip rex after I have installed it. And I provide the path to the code. In this case, I'm already in the correct directory. So I'm just going to say dot um, to point to this directory. Otherwise, I could also specify the full path. So home or whatever, or in my case, since I'm on WSL, it's going to be mount C and so on. Uh, but I can just go with, uh, with a dot here. So pip rex dot. And what you see now is it um, created a requirements txt file, which we shall verify manually. And you can also see that here import name chess not found locally. So it's resolving it with a PyPI PI server. Um, and it found this package, which is in this case, the correct one. Um, same for requests, do I not have requests installed? This is interesting. Not sure if I have requests installed. I do actually. Um, but still, it finds uh, the package. And what I can do here is I can open up now the requirements txt file. And you can see that this is um, what we need here. So this is actually the requirements txt file based on the code, not on my environment. So chess is included here as well, even though I don't have chess on my system. So if I actually go ahead and say Python three, my module, uh, module three, it's going to say no module named chess, as you can see. Now, if I want to change something, if I want to overwrite this, of course, I can just delete the requirements txt file, or I can just rerun the command. And I can say dash dash force to overwrite the existing requirements file. And that's about it. This is how you can automatically create requirements txt files based on the code, not based on your environment and not based on manual specifications. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.